There's this other thing called antimatter. During the Big Bang, the universe should have created half and half. Most expensive thing on Earth that takes billions of years to make. Hello and welcome to an exciting new video from Business Empire. What if we were to tell you the most expensive thing on Earth isn't diamonds, gold or even rare earth? The distinction for this goes to a substance often referenced in sci-fi and action films. Antimatter. Due to its extreme scarcity, huge energy potentials to be utilized and near impossibility to acquire, antimatter is the most expensive object in the world ever discovered. And surely something very intriguing. Every aspect of its existence makes it exceptional in every way. We can all imagine filling up our cars with gasoline, but can you imagine one day filling up your own personal rocket ship with antimatter and traveling the cosmos? Stick to the video till the end to know the complete details. And do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel for the more exciting content. Now, let's begin. What is the definition of antimatter? Antimatter is the precise and exact antithesis of matter as we see it. It acts as matter's nemesis, and if it comes into contact with ordinary matter, it causes total annihilation of both the matter and itself, releasing a large amount of energy in the form of gamma rays, small subatomic particles known as neutrinos, and occasionally other smaller matter-antimatter pairs in the process. Antimatter, which was discovered in the first half, of the 20th century has been the focus of much scientific investigation as well as an increasingly ambitious and costly scientific testing. The entire riddle of antimatter revolves around the fact that despite being theorized as matter's twin brother, antimatter is essentially non-existent in the cosmos today. It's one of particle physics's most perplexing concept as well as one of the most lucrative. Antiparticles Protons, which have a positive electrical charge, and neutrons, which have a neutral charge, are found in the nucleus of an atom. Electrons, which have a negative charge, circle around the nucleus in orbits. The orbits can alter depending on how much energy each electron have. According to NASA, the electrical charge of antimatter is inverted in comparison to matter. Positrons are anti-electrons that act similarly to electrons but have a positive charge. Antiprotons are protons with a negative charge, as the name suggests. Antimatter particles, sometimes known as antiparticles, have been created and researched at massive particle accelerators such as CERN's Large Hadron Collider. The Tale of Antimatter Antimatter has a long history of its own, one that is almost as old as the universe itself. It plays the role of Romeo to Matter's Juliet, both of whom are doomed to die on first touch in this circumstance. Paul Dirac proposed the theory in 1928, and Carl Anderson identified the first antimatter particle four years later, in 1932. Surprisingly, the term antimatter was created far earlier, in two very speculative letters addressed by a certain Arthur Schuster to the British scientific journal Nature in 1898. 30 years before antimatter theory was really formulated. Even funnier is the fact that despite its existence, Dirac never used the term antimatter in his theory and instead accepted and popularized it along the way. Antimatter is thought to have formed in a nearly equal amount to matter at the time of the universe's creation, according to physicists. Data crunching suggests that shortly after the universe was founded, or toward the conclusion of the inflationary era, there was a minute imbalance in the number of matter and antimatter particles born. And that, for every 10 billion and 1 particles of matter, 10 billion particles of antimatter were born. The most intriguing element is what happened after that. Most of the antimatter obliterated most of the matter formed, and because matter still remained in large numbers, even if infinitesimally, matter eventually won out. That is how we got to be ruled by matter, which is so plentiful in the visible universe today. Natural Occurrences of Antimatter The most prevalent types of antimatter formed naturally are positrons, anti-electrons, and anti-neutrinos, which are subatomic particles. During natural radioactivity, 
positrons are born by an occurrence known as positive decay. But antineutrinos are also born naturally during similar natural radioactive decays. The American Astronomical Society discovered positrons in thunderstorm clouds in tiny concentrations. In addition, satellite experiments suggest that positrons and a few antiprotons make up less than 1% of primary cosmic radiation. Black holes and neutron stars, which produce positrons in large quantities in the form of positron electron plasma, are the largest natural sources of antimatter generation known to man. Antimatter created in the laboratory. In particle accelerators or nuclear experimental processes, the identical antimatter particles are created artificially. High energy lasers are sometimes driven through thin gold foils, and antimatter particles are sometimes created as a result of high energy subatomic collisions. CERN created the first antimatter atoms in 1995. Nine anti hydrogen atoms, to be exact. They were still too hot for physicists to investigate, and it took the Athena project until 2002 to create the world's first cool anti hydrogen. With 99.9% .9 losses, the cooling down procedure was still exceedingly inefficient. There are numerous solutions available today, but none of them appear to be promising enough to secure widespread antimatter availability. Cost of antimatter. Antimatter is extremely uncommon and the most expensive substance on the planet. Even at the darkest and most remote reaches of the universe, not much of it would exist today due to its destructive relationship with matter since its birth. Even today, CERN is the site of the world's largest artificial antimatter synthesis, with a maximum pace of 10 million antiprotons per minute. Even if the process involved became 100% efficient, it would take CERN 100 billion years to produce one gram of antihydrogen at the current rate. The cost of producing a single atom of antihydrogen at CERN is predicted to be $62.5 trillion, thus making antihydrogen and consequently antimatter the most expensive substance in the world and human history. Usage of antimatter why it attracts researchers varies from researcher to researcher, but it could have a wide range of applications in human technology today. The search for newer, cleaner sources of energy is the trendiest topic in antimatter research right now. It's a long way from being affordable, clean energy, but if mastered, it may help fulfill the tremendous energy demands of a highly developed Earth in the future. Or perhaps an interplanetary or intergalactic civilization it might potentially be used as a source of intergalactic fuel. The energy equivalent of roughly 43 megatons of TNT may be obtained by annihilating one kilogram of antimatter with one kilogram of matter. This quantity of energy is close to the Tsar Bomba, the world's largest thermonuclear weapon, which weighs 27,000 kilograms. This is why, due to antimatter's incredibly destructive and explosive nature, it has been theorized that it may be employed as a weapon. However, it is safe to say that humanity is still a long way from acquiring this capability. Further usage of antimatter is in the field of medicine, where antimatter is frequently utilized to expose the workings of the body. A tracer molecule is injected into the body, which produces antimatter in the form of positrons. A physiologically active molecule is connected to a positron-emitting radioactive isotope. The antimatter it emits is detected indirectly by the pairs of gamma rays it emits when each positron collides with an electron. Different metabolic processes, such as oxygen usage in the brain, might be highlighted depending on the tracer molecule. Antimatter can potentially indicate the location of tumors or molecular docking sites for neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine in the brain. That's all for today, folks. We hope you have found the video informative and fun to watch. Also, tell us in the comment section your views about antimatter and its potential usages. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon next to it for regular updates. Goodbye.